Hi, and welcome back to Thinking Kingdom Thoughts. I'm Tracy, and I just want to thank you for coming. Today's show is about how to pack for Sukkot. We've been waiting for this, haven't we? So um, we're going to get started pretty quick with that. Um, today's guest is Kayla Grunstein. And you may remember her from a previous couple videos. She did the All About Lenin and also Moving Out of State for Torah. And so um, she is kind enough uh, to allow us into her home today to show us about how to pack for Sukkot. So, um, Kayla, do you mind uh, leading us out in prayer? No problem. Yahweh Father, we just thank you so much for this day and this opportunity to uh, come come here with my with my beautiful friend Tracy and have this conversation. I pray that this will be a blessing to many people. Um, I pray that this will help ease some nerves, give people some great ideas, some tips and tricks and things to think about, um, but also not be overwhelming in any sort of way. Um, I pray that we cover any bases that need to be covered and um, that people would have grace and mercy for just different situations and be thoughtful of those things. I pray that you would uh, prepare all of us as we prepare to go outside of our homes and set up Sukkot, um, set up sukkahs and tents and all the like, that you would help us to remember all the things that we will need, that we will be prepared, but also just have that room and that uh, space for focusing on rejoicing um, for this time of Sukkot. Uh, I'm very excited. I know a lot of us are getting very excited for this. Uh, looking forward to Sukkot and being with um, fellowship and community. So we just lift this whole interview up and just pray that um, only things that would be helpful and beneficial would come out of this. And um, we give it all to you. In the name of your son, our Messiah Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. That's a beautiful prayer. Okay, so the first question is, uh, what do we? Where do we start? That's a great. I, I feel like once I get started, like then I'm, I'm good to go. I I can motivate more. But just getting that motivation and getting started is just seems to be my trouble you i think know? that's everyone's trouble for anything we yeah know, sometimes we can get stuck in our own head we get too scared to start right. so sometimes literally just to start is just literally putting one foot in front of the other and getting started because yeah. once we get going we can be motivated to kind of continue to go and once you you'll, you'll notice that if you make a plan to do something and just put one or two items on your list if you get those accomplished, oh, yeah. it gives you that motivation to be like, I can keep going, yeah. I can do more, and you just right. you get in that yes. mood and that mode of keep going. Yeah. But another thing I wanted to bring up too, especially for Sukkot packing, pray first. And I know that oh, kind of sounds like a yeah. cop out, but it's really, I'm very genuine <laughs> when I say it. I pray before I pulled all this stuff out, I'm praying as I'm preparing, yes. I'm praying as I'm packing, I'm gonna be praying as we're loading up the car, just make sure we don't forget anything and that and that my mind sets in the right place. But I think prayer sure all along the way, um, even just praying for the motivation to get started, sometimes that can help because the Holy Spirit is here to help us. He's our advocate and that's who's gonna help us as we're praying. He's yeah. gonna be like, oh, she wants help. Ask and you will be given to you. Yeah. So I wanna Ooh. motivate people to, well, that's good, to isn't pray it? first. That's, yeah. um, also, if you're like me, making lists can be a great way to get started. Um, Watching some videos might be another great way to get started, like this one. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and um, another great tip that I'm, you're going to get lots of tips and tricks is um, after you do Sukkot this year or during Sukkot or both, make lists. Yes. Also, while you're at Sukkot, on your phone, in notebook, or wherever, and that way you can have a checklist ready to go for the next year's Sukkot. So maybe you aren't gonna be as overwhelmed. If you already have a nice checklist started for your specific situation, your specific family, your specific location, 
then that's great and be like, okay, I know I need to start preparing yeah. for Sukkot. <laughs> I'm gonna go grab my checklist that I already have. Yeah. And that'll get me motivated to start going. Right. So yeah. Those are my couple couple tips and tricks for getting going to start packing for Sukkot. I like that. I like that. So we've been given several great ideas from the tribe ladies. Um that will come up in this video. Are there any that uh, you'd like or will be doing yourself? Yeah, uh, so every year you learn something new. Every year you hear something and you're like, that's a good idea. I'm gonna do that before. I'm gonna do that while I'm preparing for a I'm gonna pack that way or I'm gonna buy another one of these or do something else. Yeah. All of course, if, if you can afford it and within reason. Um, so look at my notes real quick, guys. I, this year, one of the things that was really cool, I think a lot of people really like, that's why I'm gonna share this one first, is using Ziploc bags for clothing for yes. days. Yes, yes, yes. I know you were excited about that. Yes, yes. And especially for children. So if you have uh, young kids, you can literally pack a pair of long shorts, long sleeve, short sleeve, underwear, socks, all in one little Ziploc baggie, yep. zip that up, and stick that in. And first of all, you can smush the air out of that. Yes. It takes up a lot less space, even than rolling. Um, and the kid, you can literally just hand them a bag or they just grab a bag and it has one of every single yeah. item that they need in there. Yeah. Pair of socks, pair of underwear, all the different shirts and stuff like that. So, um, and you know, like, oh, if it's hot or it's cold, they can put it on their bed and they can just, okay, well, it's cold this morning, I'm gonna put my long pants on, yeah. it's getting hot, I'm gonna run back in my tent, change my pants, and they just grab the, ba the bag that's on their bed. Right. And then they, they switch the clothes out. So I'm gonna use some of that this year. I did that with just packing like my swimwear and stuff like that too, just to kind of keep things more organized oh, and yeah. separated, being like, right. that's not gonna be in my way. And if we're gonna do some swimming or play in the water, I just grab the swim bag out and grab it and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Um, has everything in there we need for, for swim, swimming stuff. So. I liked that idea, which I know you liked that idea. Too. Yeah, I thought that was fabulous. And I already um, packed for myself my outfits. And um, when I heard that you could just put them in a Ziploc baggie for the kids, I was like, yes, and rolling. I learned years ago that if you roll the clothes, that um, works out better. You can fit more things in. And I see some really cool ways of, of, of folding where you can like pack like a whole set of clothes in yes. one and roll it all in one. So you just grab the one roll, which is kind of a similar concept to the, the bag concept. Yeah. But you just grab one roll and you're like, that has my whole outfit, my underwear, everything is all in there. Right. All rolled together nice and neat. Yeah. I'm also using that, I, I took that idea and I'm gonna vary it a little bit, use a variation of it. Uh huh. So I have a, I'm gonna be tent camping with my husband, me, a toddler, and a baby. Yeah. My baby is not sleeping great. Um, I have a feeling my baby's probably gonna be like a sunrise waker, and my other two wanna sleep. Yeah. So I, instead of having to change the diaper in the, in the, in the tent and change the clothes in the tent and get my clothes all in the tent, I'm gonna have a little baggie that has a fresh diaper, clothes, stuff like that, and I can just grab it real quick, Yes. take it out of the tent, and I'll have somewhere where I can find to, to, oh, to yeah, get the baby yeah, all dressed up. Yeah, wherever I need to go, I'll, I'll figure that out. But that way I can get out of the tent. So my, cause you know, you're changing a baby's diaper and getting them dressed. They're loud, they're fussy, they're crying. Mm. And then you're gonna wake up everybody else in the tent. So gotcha. not a good idea. So I kind of am gonna take that idea and I'm gonna kind of variation of it a little bit. Oh yeah. For my good. specific situation. Yeah, and that's what you'll find today with this show is that um, you may like certain aspects of the idea and uh, or try the whole idea and then find out well this works out a little bit better for me and uh, be sure and share those ideas with whoever you're doing Sukkot with um, because that's that's how we all learn is by learning from each other and so we want to do that and, um, and I'm looking forward to the comment section on this post particularly I'm gonna come back and check this before I go to Sukkot and try to answer questions if people have specific questions for me and I'm gonna check it after Sukkot and maybe add some comments of more things that I maybe picked up this year or how things worked out that I'm trying new this year um, so don't be afraid to, to get in those comments share tips and tricks that you guys have that's how we learn uh, especially for Sukkot yeah yeah so did you uh, make up a list of things that 
uh, we could go through today? Uh, checklist of things to do? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so this is not, I'm not gonna like, sh like go through the checklist with, with like talking, but I did wanna show you guys. And this is gonna be in the comment, uh, the description box. Yes. There's gonna be a hyperlink that can send you to the website. This is REI's uh, camping checklist. And it's two pages long if you print it out. It's not completely, um, what's the word, comprehensive, but it's really got a lot of great things on there to make sure you don't forget the main stuff, right? Um, in the comment or in the description box, if you don't want to go to that website, I'm also going to have Tracy put in this exact same list with a little bit of an addition here. And then it has the hyperlink on there. And that should be in the description box. That way, if you just want to scan it real quick with your eyes and be like, I mean, I pretty much am used to packing. I know what to pack. Oh, I totally forgot my yeah. extra tent stakes. Or, oh, I totally forgot. I forget a random other thing on there. Um, toilet paper or something, you know? So, so you're gonna be like, okay, I wanted to pack that. And then I also just wanna show real quick, you can even get to the point where, this is my first year doing this, so you don't have to do this like your first year, but it's something to think about, tips and tricks and things to think about maybe for next year's Seco or or a couple of years from now. This is just my, my, my meal packing list. So I'm preparing and planning general ideas for, for lunch, for at breakfast and dinners. But let's be real, we're Seco-ing and we're gonna be in a community and some of that stuff might change. So, yeah. um, but I did wanna show you guys that. And I also, I did wanna bring up another, uh, forgot another tip and trick, the two cooler. Oh, I really like that two cooler. Oh yeah, one. yeah, we do that, we do that. We I never use, did that. Uh, one cooler for just the drinks because you open and close so much. So much, yeah. Um, and then we have a second cooler that we use that is for the food items, the, your meals and things like that, that, you know, once a day you're gonna open up and shut and the ice stays quicker, longer. Um, freezing your water bottles um, to put in in there and using less ice and more of your water bottles. Because you're gonna use, you're gonna drink the water anyway. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, drink it so. anyway. And I do wanna make sure I bring up this too, you guys. This is camping for Sukkot, so it's not just regular camping. A lot of times when people go camping, they're camping for typically like a three day weekend, sometimes four tops. Yeah. We're talking about an eight day thing. Yeah. And some for some of us, it's even longer than that. Right. They're there for yeah. setup. They're there for a tear down for like a community, especially if you're doing it with like a church like we are, we're going as a church community. Yeah. So you're packing and thinking and being thoughtful of a very long trip. Right, yeah. So um, I want to make sure we also, and not only that, this isn't just regular camping. You're also talking about this is a feast day. We're talking about Sabbaths. Not yes. everybody has, people don't have to worry about Sabbaths when they're just going on a regular That's camping true. trip. That's true. That's true. People don't have to worry about making sure they have their Bible for, for Bible studies. Yeah. People don't need to make sure we need a lulav if we bring our lulav or we need yeah. a shofar. You don't have to think about those kinds of things. So I did want to make sure to, to, this isn't just camping video. It's literally a camping for Sukkot. Yeah. We're camping for a long period of time. We're camping in a community, which is, has a lot of benefits too. Yeah. Yeah. So if you forget something, Tracy, yeah. I totally <laughs> forgot to bring some extra toilet paper. Do you have some extra toilet paper uh, I can keep in my tent? That's right, yes, <gasps> Thank you, Tracy. I don't have to try to run to the store an hour away, yeah. you know? Right. Um, <clears throat> and we can also do things as a group. Like I know we've talked about, even just today, the women have been talking about Maybe we can make up kind of a community area where we can wash dishes or wash clothes kind of in a community area so we don't yeah. have to each have one all at our individual tent sites. Yeah, and so. we've done a, a previous talk about the women of the Bible. And so as women are each studying a different woman and um, we're learning how to, um, how how we're going to present that to the rest of the ladies and yeah i have to bring um, that information to Sukkot, which you wouldn't have to bring on a normal trip right i have to make sure i have all my notes for my my women's study that i that i'm bringing to Sukkot this year right yeah so, right there's exactly. just things like that that we have to think about too and and knowing that you have to set aside time for the lord you know you want to do that whether you're regular camping or Sukkot camping but uh, it's really important to do that. And this is a rehearsal time. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to be moving us at some point in time. And um, this is a rehearsal of us being able to camp together and what we need, what we don't need, what we used last year and what we didn't use last year and get rid of what you didn't. 
pack lighter mm -hmm. and smarter. More that minimal way. if you can, yeah. more primitive. Sometimes it's nice camping with um, with with the nice luxuries, but I also like to remind people when you're when you're doing Sako, be thoughtful of uh, being a little bit more primitive for the, the case if we have like an actual exodus that we have to do and we're going to be Sakoting and we're going to be moving and having to transport all these things. Um, you may not have a car. I don't know. You may you may only be able to take one car. You may you may have to pack much lighter. You may have to know how to start an actual fire, you know, yeah. things like that. So sometimes I like to use Sukkot too as a way of uh, of just kind of thinking more primitively, even if I'm not necessarily Sukkoting super primitive. Yeah. Um, I, I like to, to kind of keep that in the back of my mind, kind of be more right. minimal minded to, to be more space saving, to be more lightweight if yeah. I can. So. Yeah. Yeah. And dual uses for things like yeah. the water bottle, it's frozen, <clears throat> it's, it's ice. But then it's also your water bottle yeah. as well. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just turn this over to um, Kayla and step back out of the way because she has like got everything out and she's going to show us how to pack and what to pack and it might remind us of some things that we need to buy yet because we've got a few more days before um, this all starts. So. Um, Kayla, I'm going to step out of the way and um, let you go at it. Yeah, but I mean, feel free to ask me questions because if you think of questions of stuff that I have out, yeah. then I'm sure one of you probably has the same question. Right. So feel free I, to ask I know what we can too. start with, if you don't mind. Sure. The potty. The potty. <laughs> Let, the potty. How to pack and how to go potty <laughs> at Seco. True, true story. And I do have a little potty. I yeah, this is something to keep in mind. I mean, uh, she's pregnant and she goes a lot. Yes, I do. And so this saves her packing up her kids and going down and using the bathroom and then coming back to We're the trying tent. to sneak out of my tent without waking my baby in the middle of the night with a zipper. Yes. I have to go potty. Right. Or having to put on a whole bunch of layers of clothes just so I can look decent enough to go to the potty. And that's Well, yeah, right. that's another thing. I, yeah. Do I, is, is everything okay? Like, do I have <laughs> hair sticking way up or. Do I need to know? put like an extra sweater on because I'm not wearing a bra? Maybe right. the bed. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Things you gotta so think true. about. And yeah. again, things I'm thinking about with my grab bag too because I'm like, I gotta make sure I'm. And you know, we all think out. about those things. Yeah. We all do. It's not, you know. So. <laughs> and so again, um, my first year at Sako, we didn't have like a formal bathroom. Um, anyway, so all you had access to was a porta potty that the church community that I was with was a really small church community. Um, they just had a porta potty that they rented, uh -huh. um, and that's where you went to the, the bathroom in the middle of the night. So it wasn't even like a nice place to go to. It was dark and everything else. So it's nice kind of having a, a potty in your in your tent. So literally, my potty is a bucket. It has a potty lid. It's a little toilet lid. It sits right on top of my five my five gallon bucket, and inside right now it's packed, ready to go for Seco. But when I get there, all this stuff comes out, and it's all potty related. So um, I have a used oatmeal container that I filled with wood chips, and it's a little what do you what did you call this a, a bundle? No, what did you call this? Oh, a bale. A bale. bale. So this is wood chips that I got from. It's the pet area at Walmart. I mean, you can get sawdust, you can get wood chips, you yeah. can get, there's some of them make gel ones. You can do it without anything. I suggest you have something in there, in your little, uh, in your potty. Yeah. Um, so I just have a bale. I have it taped off right now and I'm gonna have this set in my tent as like an extra. But this is gonna be the one I use on a regular basis to cover my potty, you know, to make sure it's not loud when I go pee, cause she was like, is it going to get loud when you go pee in a bucket? I mean, if it's an empty bucket, yeah, it's going to be kind of loud. Put some wood chips in the bottom and you don't really hear you going pee in there. So, right, yeah, that's um, a good solution. Completely filled up. It has my rubber band on it that I'm going to use to rubber band my bag. There's a bag in here so you don't just pee and poo directly into the potty. The I suggest you, is, yeah, yeah line it with, line line it with, with a bag. Um, I, I can, you can buy bags that fit 
specifically for a five gallon bucket yeah. at, the, at the camping area. And they have gel um, inside so that it solidifies everything. Or you can get ones like me where just they're just bags. Yeah. So, so then I just fill it with wood chips if I want. Yeah. I even have a little to go toilet paper, or you can bring a toilet paper roll from home or whatever and just have it sitting down there next to you or wherever. Um, I like to keep it in this because it keeps the moisture out. This is in a plastic container. Otherwise, my suggestion is to put it in a Ziploc bag. Um, and what is that again? This is the toilet paper. Oh, okay. This is actually literally camping toilet paper. There's no uh, center roll in it, so it stays really small, oh, really lightweight, and it's in a dang. plastic container to keep it dry. That's that's really good. And then right next to it, I'm gonna have my um, in case I make like a spill. This is gonna be in our tent anyway, but like if I spill some wood chips or something, yeah. you want easy access to this, and we're gonna pull it out right away. All this stuff's gonna come out right away, so it's gonna be a potty ready to use. Yeah. So I just have that in there with it extra. Don't forget to bring a dustpan and a broom. <laughs> We forgot yes. that one year. It's, oh, I you got to clean out your your tent. Yeah. To pack it up, even just right. to pack it up. And if you're gonna pack, if you're gonna be camping anywhere where there's dust and dirt and right, you're gonna want to keep up on that too. So. You mentioned being uh, without toilet paper and being able to be in a community where you can ask. Yes. Dana saved me uh, last year. <laughs> I forgot all about a room and a dustpan. See. But she had one, and she was Wait. parked right next to me, so. See, that's what I loved about being in a community. And I did want to talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about my first year of Sukkot yeah. compared to where I am now. This is my this is going to be my third Sukkot, but also keep in mind that we also camp for Shavuot. So yeah. you also get a little bit of, like, a I kind of love that. It's like that. a practice. It's like a smaller, kind of smaller Sukkot. Yeah, it's usually about four days. Um, so my first I was in Nebraska. <clears throat> it was October. I hadn't gone tent camping in a very long time. This was my first year tent camping with a baby. Mm, wow. I had a baby and I was like, what do I do with a baby camping and it's freezing? Um, <laughs> I learned a lot that year, let's just say. Um, and I wanted to share that because I want to share... Um, maybe mistakes that I made that you can think about so you don't hopefully make the same mistakes. Um, and also just like great tips and helpful community that we had my first year of Sukkot and it's been like that ever since ever since because I do Sukkot in community. Um, so it's something to think about if you're going to be Sukkoting alone, you're going to have to make sure you don't forget anything. But it's great when you do have a community and you're, and you're able to fellowship with like a church and stuff. But my first year, I, we used an air mattress on the floor. Um, me, my husband, and the baby all shared that, and we had a pack and play to put the baby in. Um, but I was so worried about him being cold, so I put him in like one of those like snow suit yes. type things, and I was like, <laughs> I'm so worried about him the whole time. I just wanted him by me the whole time, but yeah. he did really good in that little snow suit. Um, honestly, he actually really liked sleeping in his own space. Air mattresses can get really cold, even if you're going to be camping somewhere where it's hot. Yeah. Um, it gets cold at night a lot of times, and the ground can get really cold. So yeah. there were some tricks that I learned. If you are going to use a mattress, um, you can get ones that are up off the ground that are on like cots or like um, on like a. It's like a regular bed once you've got it set up. Yeah, it's a yeah. frame basically, and then you can put an air yeah. mattress on top of that. That helps get it off the ground. It also gives you some storage space underneath. Yeah. Um, or you can use like, I hate to read, like an exercise mat, like those foam mats. Sometimes even just putting a layer of that or even cardboard underneath your, your mattress. Yeah, we use, will help keep some of that cold off of you. Yeah, when we did Civil War reenactments, um, we used wool, wool blankets. Yes, sorry. And um, we would put that down as a first layer yes. and then build up from there. Yeah, and not to say yeah. another thing people will do is you can put one underneath the mattress or you can put it on top of your mattress, like a wool blanket just right on top, and then you can put like your sleeping bags or blankets or yeah. a sheet on top of that. A lot of people like to pack sheets with their with their air mattresses yeah, and stuff I like do. that. But another option you can think about if you want to do if you want to do air mattresses. But I remember my first year, I learned so much about tent camping because I'd only gone tent camping with my dad. And we'd always done just those like pop-up pole tents or whatever yeah and uh we always just had like an air mattress or we would just sleep on a sleep sleeping bag on the floor and be freezing and it was just what we did yeah um so i learned a lot of really cool tips and tricks i had never seen a cot before i was like what is this madness this cot that you're sleeping <laughs> on and then you can get like bunk cots we totally have a bunk cot now because yeah. 
I you love the idea it. that it saves space. I love that you can put stuff underneath it. I love that yeah. um, it's, it, it keeps the cold off of you from underneath you and just that kind of like, things to think about like that that I really, really liked. Yeah. Um, so a cot, also different kinds of tents. I didn't even realize they had different kinds of tents. I remember our first Sukkot, um, we had just our little Cole Coleman tent or whatever. And I remember looking at this other person's tent and I'm like, what is that? And they're like, it's a canvas tent. And I was like, what is a canvas tent? I had never yeah. seen anything like it. So I was like, can I look inside? Can I tour? And then I saw the cots and I was like, this is really cool. And so I like, yeah. I, we now have a canvas tent. We didn't have a canvas tent our first year. Yeah. Um, that's actually new this year for us. We had it for Shavuot this year and now we have the first Sukkot this year. Nice. Um, but a canvas tent was really nice to have as kind of an upgrade. Yeah. Um, a lot of, some of the things you're going to learn are just upgrades and you, you cannot afford to get all this stuff your first year probably. No. Unless you're just no. made of money. Yeah. But um, some of these things you just kind of gradually upgrade and even some of the stuff we are bringing this year is going to be upgrades or an addition, right? So, yeah. Um, but I also remember I had totally forgot anything to wash dishes with. I was like, I had no soap, no scrubbies. And I was like, <laughs> I'm an adult and I have to camp by myself as an adult. I'm already, I, I planned my meals kind of, sort of, but I totally forgot about cleaning my stuff. And I was like, uh, yeah. so it was nice to be in a community because they're like, oh, we got soap, we got scrubbies. Yeah. We actually washed dishes as a group, which was really nice. Yeah. Especially because it was so cold that they would just kind of fill a bin, a bucket, a bin, sorry, a bin up with dirty dishes, and then once it got to a certain level, they'd be like, okay, they need to get washed. So they would heat yeah. a big, huge, like, stock pot of water, right. pour it in there, and you want to wash it quick because it's cold. Yeah. And it cools off really fast. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. And then while they're washing dishes and putting it in another tub, they're heating another stock pot of water to make for a rinsing tub, and then right. they just did it all together, which was really cool. Yeah. Something to think about. So um, my first year, I just learned a lot. I learned about the potty. <laughs> Make yeah. sure I have a potty in my tent from now on because I had to keep going to a porta potty in the middle of the night. Yeah. And wake uh, my baby up. And with the getting back to the mattresses, one thing that we learned too, because we use the air mattress with the that's lifted up on the frame. And we found out the first time we slept on it that you can just barely roll and it it just makes this horrendous noise. And so if you feel it, line it with some baby powder. Put baby powder on that mattress before you put it on the bed, and that'll eliminate that crunchy sound that you hear that just wakes you up when you roll over in the middle of the night. It's it's just this. On the outside of your, so after you blow yeah. it up, you put a little bit of baby powder, baby powder on, on it, and it stops that crunchy. I don't know how to describe that sound, but you know what I'm talking about. I think about. so, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And if you don't know, and if you have an air mattress, maybe you'll find out if you don't use baby powder. <laughs> yeah, you will find out. If you don't want to use baby powder, my other suggestion is cornstarch. It acts very similar. So oh, yeah. If you don't want to use it, some people are against baby powder. So yeah. cornstarch is another option. Yeah, that would be. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. So just some cool things that you learn. And again, the list will have a lot. If you go in the description box, you'll be able to see a lot of things to make sure you bring with you and you don't forget. But you're also going to have to be, I want to make sure I brought this up. You have to be thoughtful of your specific situation. Yes. So, you know, what is, what is your camp site specifically going to look like? What is your camp group going to look like? What state and city are you in? What time of year is it? Yeah. Um, so like, so I know some people, they have to sleep with a CPAP. So they need to make sure they have somewhere where they're have yeah. electricity That's and distilled true. water and all those kinds of things, you know? Do you have medications that you need to make sure you always have on hand? Do you have right. asthma you need to make sure you always have access to your, you know, inhalers and stuff like that? Do you have a baby? Do you need to make sure you have somewhere for your baby to sleep and baby yeah. to sit and change your baby, place to change your baby, um, yeah. place to nurse your baby? Do you have, um, are you gonna be in a place where it's gonna be really cold? Make sure you have things that are gonna keep you warm at night. Um, a hot water bottle or something like that to put in your in your sleeping bag or wool socks or you know things like that are you gonna have to worry about scorpions I know last year we had scorpions that we had to worry about I yeah. never had to worry about that in Nebraska um, do you have to worry about bears you need to make sure you have um, stuff that locks up safely or you get rid of your trash a certain thing are you gonna have to worry about ants I know that they talked about that here when I first came here they're like we had really bad ants one year be thoughtful about ants Make yeah. sure you have lids to lock on stuff. Um, some people are like, oh, well, I'll just keep my food in my car. Is your campsite, your camp space, are you going to be able to have your car near you? Right. Because I know, like, 
we probably won't this year for me and my husband. We don't have an RV site. Camping tent campers are gonna kind of just be spread out throughout the middle. I will not probably be able to have my car near my campsite. Right. So yeah. I have to make sure all my food is gonna to have to be at my campsite. Yeah. And it has to be locked up safe. No raccoons can get to it, no ants can get to right. it. And plus we're dealing with mountain lions this mountain year. Mountain lions, yeah. Yeah. So and we have to think about those kinds of things too. Like yeah. yeah. You, you and your kids safe and you and your family safe and your tent safe and your food safe, everything. So. Oh, and last year was the snakes too. Yeah, we had yeah. snakes last year. Really heavy. It was like breeding grounds for them. Dandy, uh, Daddy long legs were insane last year for Sukkot. They were everywhere. Yeah, and it's a campsite where <laughs> other people have camped. You would think they would just move no, on. No, it's Daddy long legs. Yeah. Well, it, it could also be because we were at COVID -y season last year. So they actually didn't yeah. have as many campers. That's and they true. actually had the campsite closed prior to yeah. us coming in. So when we came in, the critters were like, oh, holy moly. We haven't had to deal with people for yeah. months. And all of a sudden, we have all these people. That's when the... Critters didn't have time to realize that I need to back away. Right. Um, and think about like, are you gonna go swimming? Make sure you have swim gear if you're gonna go swimming. Are you gonna, are you gonna deal with four season weather? Are you gonna deal with two season weather? You know, just be thoughtful of your specific situation and your specific campsite. Because yeah. some campsites have electricity if you're gonna tent camp, some don't. So we're yeah. not gonna have electricity this year at tent campsites. Right. Um, do, do they have a shower? Are you gonna have to be bringing a shower yeah um or are you gonna have to go to bathe somewhere else or are you gonna bring quarters for a shower like we have to bring right. quarters this year yeah laundry are you gonna be able to do laundry do they have a laundry facility or do they have a laundry mat nearby okay, yeah i'm sure you have quarters for yeah, that. Nobody's, that's there or yeah. just pack enough clothes so you don't have to do that you know you have to be really thoughtful of your specific situation i just want to bring those yeah. kinds of things up because um i don't want to overwhelm you by saying all those things but i do want you to be thoughtful of Think about those things first because there's going to be some very glaringly obvious things that you're going to have to be very specific and make sure you don't forget. And maybe yeah. print out a sheet <laughs> and write those things on there. Make sure I have quarters. Like that's not going to say quarters on the on the checklist, but you're going to want to make sure you bring quarters. Yeah, write you know? it down and make you know make it to where you can check it off. And again, a baby like it's not going to have like a crib on there or a pack and play or something. And if you have a baby, you'll be like, okay, well I need to make sure I have my pack and play. Don't forget the pack and play. I'm going to be yeah. in big trouble if I don't have a pack and play. Utilize the back part of your paper, the back side, and uh, adjust it to your needs. As, and listen to seasoned campers yeah. who have great <clears throat> ideas. Lex and Amanda has helped us out with a lot of that. And um, Brandy and Aaron have helped us out a lot with that. And so thank you guys for uh, stepping up and Haley. Um, has had a lot of wonderful ideas and Amber um, I just a lot and I'm hoping that this video will be helpful for you so if you're not yeah. necessarily living in Oklahoma you aren't in a grafted church community you know hopefully these will give you some ideas and be like oh learn from our mistakes learn from learn from things that we've learned learn the tips and tricks that we've implemented yes. So I'm hoping this will be helpful yeah. I did want to bring up one more thing be thoughtful of how you're going to be packing your vehicle because um, you might lay all this exactly. stuff out and be like, I have nowhere to put this in my car. We don't have room for the kid. Yeah. I can put <laughs> Where it in my car. Where put my baby? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody's situation is different. I know a family this year who has a mom, a dad, two kids in car seats, and they're bringing only one vehicle. So they have to be able to pack every single thing they need, tent, water, food, wow. everything, in one vehicle. Now, you may need to think. Can we afford to get like a roof rack that might be able to put like totes oh, on yeah. top, you know? Good. But Good. if not, you know, think about can we bring two cars? Is that affordable? How yeah. far are we traveling? We put a rack on the very back end of ours That's because of what and we, you know. Or trailer we, or, I mean, you yeah. have to be thoughtful of your, your packing capacity as well. Yeah. Um, so if that means you need to be bare bones or ask people to bring things, that's sometimes another option. You can be like, does anybody have room for a tote or two totes or my tent because I can fit everything else but I cannot fit this gigantic tent yeah. you know, or something like that. Yeah. So just please be thoughtful of your specific situation for your vehicle, yeah. how far you're traveling because it's a lot of stuff to bring for Sukkot potentially. Yeah. So be yeah. thoughtful. And also um, people loaning things out like mm -hmm. you can't buy everything your first year no. and with our group you can just post out there hey I need a tent this year. Yep. Or does anyone have a cot I could borrow mm -hmm. or a sleeping bag or whatever it may be. They may even give you the stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, 
A lot of people donate for those who are in need for the next year. And so all that stuff sits dormant if no one uses it. And it was meant to be used um, and enjoyed. I have an extra tent if someone sees this before grafted and is going to our grafted one. I have an extra just pull pop-up tent. It's an eight person tent, I believe. Can't actually fit eight people with stuff in there, but. Right. You know, you yeah, know I don't know how they measure that out. Like side by side by side. No, they side. literally, that's how they, they measured out. It's insane. Yeah. But, um, you know, I have an extra cooler. It's not the best cooler, but I have an extra cooler. I have, uh -huh. you know, a couple things like that. People have extra stuff of, um, cause maybe we've upgraded, yeah. you know, that's what happened. Like I have an extra cooler because I upgraded. I have an extra tent because I upgraded right. when we could afford to. Our yeah. first year, we may do with what we had. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's better to do that than to not go at all. I agree. And to not honor God, uh, by, by not doing that because it is, um, we've already been given the instructions to do it. And so we need to do that. Okay. Before this video is any longer, I'm just going to do my overview of stuff over here. So, yeah. okay. So be thoughtful of how you're going to be tent, uh, camping or RV camping. Are you going to be on a fire? Because this is not going to work for a fire, right? But I'm also bringing a camp stove. So this is going to be fine on my camp stove with, with my propane. Um, you can't use a Teflon right. pan with a handle on a fire. It will get ruined. Yes. Um, probably shouldn't use a glass lid. I don't know about that on a fire. Another thing I have. Like this is not acceptable for a fire. It's an enameled cast iron Dutch oven. If it was just a cast iron Dutch oven, it would be, be totally fine to use on a fire. Um, but because it's not, I have to make sure I can only use this on my camp.